Now, to understand the importance of inheritance of genetic material, we have to talk a little bit about the sexual reproduction and how it happens. So if you understand how sexual reproduction works under normal circumstances, you can skip this video and move on to the next one. Now, the purpose of reproduction is to produce an offspring. An offspring is just the organism that comes from the parent or parents. Asexual reproduction requires only one parent, but sexual reproduction usually will require two parents, a male and a female. All right. So the offspring, so we are just talking about sexual reproduction here. So for sexual reproduction, the offspring I'm just, I'm just drawing out a simple made-up organism. It doesn't exist. And that offspring, um, if we were to look at the body cell of the offspring, any cell like a skin cell or a muscle cell or a neuron, we would know that it has a nucleus. And inside the nucleus, it has these structures known as chromosomes. Now, the chromosomes are supposed to be in their uncoiled form called chromatin, but I'm just going to represent the chromosomes in their coiled form, which are the chromatids. Under normal circumstances, these are only visible during mitosis or meiosis, but I'm just going to represent it like this to make it simple. So those are the chromosomes, which are just made up of DNA. I'll explain that further in detail. But right off the bat, right now, I just want you to see how many chromosomes can you count in that body cell? They have four chromosomes over there, as I've circled, one, two, three, four, all right? But the question is, how does the offspring get chromosomes? That's what we want to know, because chromosomes are just these things that contain genetic information, okay, which affects the characteristics. So where do the offsprings get their chromosomes from? Well, the answer to that question is very simple. We have to start off with a male parent and a female parent. Okay, now, the male parent and the female parent, in their body cells, they also have four chromosomes as well. So, when the male parent and female parent reproduce with each other, they first have to produce something known as gametes. Gametes are just sex cells. For example, the human male gamete is the sperm cell, the human female gamete is the egg cell. For plants, especially flowering plants, the flowering plant male gamete is the pollen and the female gamete is the ovule. You don't need to memorize that, okay? So, but I'm just saying that gametes are sex cells. Now, I want you to understand something very interesting here. The body cell of the male parent has four chromosomes, but the male gamete will only contain two chromosomes, okay? So each parent, when they produce gametes, or sex cells, they will only give half the number of chromosomes downwards to the next generation, okay? So when the male gamete and the female gamete, which contains two chromosomes respectively, fuse with each other through a process known as fertilization, they form the zygote, which has four chromosomes, and the zygote will then eventually form the offspring, which has four chromosomes. So that's where the offspring gets the chromosomes from. The, the offsprings get their four chromosomes, by receiving two chromosomes from the male parent and two chromosomes from the female parent. The point I'm just trying to make here is to tell you that as offsprings, we will receive half the amount of chromosomes from each parent, okay? For example, I am a homo sapien who is made up of 46 chromosomes in my body cells. Therefore, I would have received 23 chromosomes from the male gamete from my father and 23 23 chromosomes from the female gamete of my mother. And that's how 23 plus 23 becomes 46. That's essentially what it is. Okay. The point of the matter over here is as follows. When the male parent produces male gametes and the female parent produces female gametes, the process is known as meiosis, which is a different type of nuclear division. And we are going to cover that in the subsequent videos in this chapter. Those gametes will have to fertilize and fuse and they will form the zygote, and of course the zygote will then undergo mitosis to produce a genetically different offspring. You see, the offspring, the offspring is not genetically the same as the male parent or the female parent because the offspring is made up of chromosomes, half of the amount of chromosomes from the male parent and female parent. It's a mixture. That is why it's always going to be genetically different from the parent, no matter what. That's it. Now, 
to just talk a little bit about chromosomes some students will be like okay what exactly are these chromosomes let's talk about it now for chromosomes what we have to know is i'm just as you can see here this is the offspring okay you can see the body cell and in the body cell you can see the nucleus with the four chromosomes i'm just going to take out the nucleus and remember the nucleus has the double membrane it has nuclear pore and whatever okay now if you remember in the revision in chapter 5 of AS, the chromosomes can exist as two forms. They can exist as the uncoiled form, known as chromatin, or when they supercoil, they will become something known as chromatid. Now, for the purpose of this chapter, I will represent the chromosomes in their chromatid form or their supercoiled form. The reason is because it's easier to quantify or count the number of chromosomes. Because if they are in their uncoiled form, they'll be so tangled up inside the nucleus, it's difficult to count them. But when I put them in their supercoiled form, you can count it. You can see, ah, there are four chromosomes inside there. One, two, three, four. Now, if I were to just take out that one chromosome, if you remember, the chromosome is made up of linear DNA and histone proteins. But to keep it simple, how do we define the chromosomes? Chromosomes are just genetic material that are made out of DNA and they contain something known as genes. In chapter 6, we studied that genes are just a length of the DNA that codes for the polypeptide. So as you can see here, I've highlighted in the chromosome, okay, in the uncoiled form, there are three genes, okay? One gene which I've represented in orange at the top, one gene which is, I don't know, pink in the middle, and one gene which is definitely green at the bottom. The point I'm trying to make over here is, this DNA molecule is made up of three genes, okay? And instead of drawing it in their uncoiled form, we can represent it in their chromatid form. How do we represent it in their chromatid form? We just have to draw out the chromatid, and each gene is represented as a single line. That is what the line is representing. Those lines are the position of the gene in the chromatid or the chromosome. So when you see those diagrams um, in the future, in your exam, don't get alarmed. It just means that it's a chromosome made up of DNA molecules, and those lines usually represent the genes in a specific position. That's what it's supposed to be at least. So this is just the introduction to this chapter.